up guys how you doing my name is Mel welcome to Holmes Law today the three major steps to learning how to bend conduit and with that let's get started all right so the first step that you're gonna learn okay is your multipliers your deductions and the shrink to specific degrees of bend okay now with that said you don't have to go crazy learning you know all of these just take the basic the basic uh degrees of bends 30 45 and 60 okay and learn those multipliers for offsets okay now if you're really new and you don't know what i'm talking about then you need to at least watch a couple of videos on what offsets are and 90 degree stubs okay just so you get a little bit of understanding Alright, but what you need to do on the first step is write these multipliers down and deductions, okay? Write the multipliers down for 30, 45, and 60 and learn these multipliers, okay? Next, learn the deductions, okay, for 90 degree stubs for conduit sizes half inch through inch and a quarter, okay? If that's too much, then just learn it from half inch to one inch or three quarter and one inch, whatever you're using out in the field currently, you know, which is mostly three quarter and one inch, depending on the type of work you're doing, okay? Lastly, learn the shrink for these offset degrees of bend, so whether it be 35, 45, uh, 30, 45, or 60, okay? Learn the shrink value, okay? There's a shrink value that you can actually use to calculate what the shrink is going to be on an offset okay find these values find these three values okay the multipliers to offsets the deductions and the shrink for these offset um degrees of bands okay find the most standard ones anything from 30 degrees to 60 and from half inch to inch and a quarter learn these values write them down on an index card or whatever and keep it on you and always just you know whenever you have time take a glance at it and, and you know go over it you know uh, the best thing is writing it out sometimes or just actually just looking at it for a little while and just reading it in your head you know that's that'll stick to you a little bit more all right so that's step one all right after you've gone through all of that you know that's step one well, the first part of step one, okay? The second part of step one is practicing, you know, after you feel confident enough that you've actually learned those uh, multipliers, deductions, and shrink values, then you wanna actually start practicing some calculations. Just write out some problems, very simply, just write out some problems and, uh, you know, solve them yourself on paper and pen. This is the best way to learn things, okay? Just on paper and pen, write out some problems, some example problems. You know, something like, for example, just, um, you know, uh, write it out. I want a 30 degree offset with a rise of four inches, okay? And then figure out the problem, okay? So for a 30 degree bend, your multiplier is two, your rise is four, so it's four times two equals eight. The answer is eight, okay? Eight inch rise. Or I mean, uh, sorry, eight inch spacing between bends. All right, so just like how I just gave you that example, do plenty of those. Do lots of those with different, you know, uh, different rise offsets, different degree of bends, and just keep, keep doing those, working those problems. The same thing for the deduction, you know, if you wanna, you know, practice your deduction for 90 degree stubs figure out different you know stub heights for different conduits write out the problem solve them okay same thing for shrink values after you're done figuring out the offsets figure out how much the offset is going to shrink okay so find those shrink values and solve those problems just practice those calculations once you're confident enough you'll know if you feel you're confident enough after practicing these calculations then move on to the second step talk to your mechanic your journeyman and your second step would be practicing how to take measurements and laying out conduit runs that's step two practicing taking your measurements and laying out conduit runs okay speak with your journeyman your mechanic telling you've been practicing 
you know, the multipliers, deductions, and whatnot, all that, and have him let you take some measurements out in the field for some conduit bends. Okay, take some basic ones, basic offset, you know, bends, basic 90 degree stub measurements, and, and whatnot. Once you've done that for a while, after he's let you take some of these measurements with him actually watching you how to take these measurements, and you feel confident enough and, you know, he feels confident enough, then start laying out some runs, okay, from A, from point A to point B, lay out the runs, or maybe a section of a run, okay, and ask your journeyman if you feel that that was a good route that he chose, that you chose, I'm sorry, okay, if you're already at the point where you're already doing this yourself, then, then that's even... I mean, uh, I don't recommend it, but if that's something, if you're learning and, and you're, you're listening to this and you're already halfway through these steps, then you can always go back and start practicing step one and step two and um, start practicing how to take your measurements and whatnot and lay out your, your runs and ask the opinion of other electricians that are more experienced than you if you feel that you've ran and laid out the conduit the correct way and ask for some feedback this way you can get better this is the best thing that you can do is ask feedback from your co-workers okay so that you can get better you know what i mean uh you have to be open to feedback and if you're ever going to get better in the game you're gonna you're gonna have to get feedback from other electricians that are more experienced than you okay and actually listen to the actual feedback and take their advice all right so after you've taken measurements and you're confident and you've laid out runs and you're confident in laying out runs and whatnot okay then you can move on to step three at this point you still haven't touched a bender at all that's my recommendation but if you already are then by all means you know um still learn these steps as you are still out in the field bending these conduits even though you're out there if they, if they threw you out there and you're you know you're bending conduit learn the steps anyways as you are still moving forward and bending conduit learn these steps okay third and final step okay learn the symbols on your hand bender and learn how to chart a hand bender okay what I mean by charting a hand bender is there are gonna be times where you need to customize your hand bender for specific degrees of bends your hand bender only has certain marks on them, but as you get better, you're gonna need different degrees of bend marks on your hand bender and on the electric bender and table bender. You'll see that you're gonna need to know how to chart this. Now, learn how to chart your bender. I have a video on YouTube that just look it up. You can search for it or, or I'll put it in the description. Charting your bender by Holmes Law. Okay, once you watch that video, okay, that's going to show you how to chart your bender. You might not need it right away when you're first starting out because it might be a little bit advanced for you to actually start using that. But the fact that you know how to chart your bender is important because as you progress in learning, you're going to need to know how to chart your bender and it'll be useful to you. Okay, learn the symbols on your bender. Learn what the arrow's for, learn what the notch is for, or teardrop, and learn what the star is used for. Learn what these things are used for, and practice using them in your daily conduit bends. Okay, if, if need be, ask your mechanic or journeyman or any co-worker to show you what they're for. Okay, and, and those are the three steps to learning how to bend correctly. Okay, your final step would, would be to pick up your hand bender and start practicing how to bend. Now, the reason why practicing how to bend is not in any of these steps because once you pick up that bender, learning how to actually bend the conduit is not really that hard, okay? These are the three steps that you have to learn. This is what's, you know, what's actually hard about bending conduit. Okay, it's learning how to take the measurements, okay, uh, learning how to lay out the runs, uh, these formulas, okay, that you have to learn, that's all, that's the only thing that's really hard about conduit, and not even that's hard, okay, 
What I'm saying is that you need to actually take these steps into account first. Learn these steps in the order that I showed you or spoke to you about and and, and that's the way to how to actually learn this properly. I've used it with plenty of apprentices and I've been very successful. I've done it with myself when I've actually, you know, gotten a little rusty and um, have been bent for a while. I've worked it through again and I've actually, you know, taught myself these through these steps and actually refreshed my memory but um this is the best way to learn how to bend conduit properly guys uh, I definitely live by this and I definitely recommend and swear by these three steps if you learn these three steps in this order and you actually do the, and work the steps I guarantee you you will, you will be a professional conduit bender in no time Okay. With that guys, I'm going to let you go. My name is Mel.